Hi everybody, I'm Kyle from Wild Ontario and today we're talking a little bit about bird watching. Now in our first video, Adriana gave you some tips and tricks to get you started on your bird watching journey. And one of the things that she mentioned was a tool called eBird. Now eBird is an online tool which helps you to both learn about birds and also to contribute to science and current bird research. The way eBird works is by asking bird watchers to do what they would do normally to go outside into the field and to observe birds. Those bird watchers then report the birds that they saw, and eBird can take all of that information from all over the world and create an incredible resource that can be used to learn more about birds. It can be used by researchers to do studies on birds, but it can also be accessed by you and me just to learn what we would like to know about the birds that we share our world with. Now you can access eBird on your computer in your web browser, which is what we're going to do today. But you should also know that there is an eBird app, which is a wonderful and easy way to take this powerful resource out into the field bird watching with you. Now, without any further ado, let's dive on into eBird. Now, as you can see, we've pulled up eBird in our browser by navigating to eBird.org and we're ready to get started. The first thing you may want to do is to create an account. Accounts are free to create and they allow you to take full advantage of all the features that eBird has to offer. Now there's tons of different stuff you can do in eBird, but we're going to focus our attention on these three tabs here at the top, Submit, Explore, and My eBird. And we're going to start in the middle with Explore. Now Explore is the place where you can learn all sorts of different things about the birds that are local to your neighborhood, or in fact about the birds that live all over the world. And while there are various ways to explore the data in eBird, we're going to focus on these two at the top, Explore Species and Explore Regions. So we'll start here on the left with Explore Species. Now this allows us to learn about any bird species in the entire world. It could be a bird which is familiar to you, a bird which visits your backyard, or a bird from another continent far away that you've only just heard of. So we'll pick a species to enter to learn a little bit about. We'll pick one of my favorite species, the black-capped chickadee. So now that we've gone to the black-capped chickadee page, we see all kinds of great information about these wonderful little birds. We've got lots of lovely photos to navigate through. We've got a little summary about the black-capped chickadee, some nice information to get started. But I think most importantly, we have this information here. What we're looking at here is information about the black-capped chickadee that's contributed by bird watchers from all over where black-capped chickadees live, which is North America. So if we look over here, we can see that over 8 million observations of black-capped chickadees have been submitted to eBird. Almost 50,000 of those observations have been submitted with photos of chickadees, and 3,000 have been submitted with audio recordings. That's a lot of information about black-capped chickadees collected by bird watchers all across North America. Now, if we want to see that information in a very visual way, we can look at this range map here on the right. So all these purple squares in this map of North America are places where black-capped chickadees have been seen or heard. And the darker the purple, the more chickadees have been observed there. Now we can interact with this map if we click large map up here in the upper right hand corner. That's going to pull the map up full screen and we can zoom in and get a little bit more detail. So here's our map of North America. Here in the purple squares are all of the places that chickadees have been observed. And we'll just go ahead and zoom in on our place, on Guelph, right here in the darkest purple part of the map. Guelph is a great place for chickadees. If we keep zooming in, we'll get some more detail and our purple squares will turn to uh, red and blue markers. And those markers are specific locations where chickadees have been observed. We'll just give eBird a minute. There are a lot of chickadees, so there will be a lot of markers. All right, here are our lovely markers indicating all the different places that people have seen black capped chickadees here in Guelph. Now there are a couple of different features of the markers. First, you'll notice that some of the markers are small, whereas some of them are bigger and they have this little fire emblem inside them. Those big markers are eBird hotspots. Those are places that are particularly good for birding. So we have a hotspot here for the Arboretum, a hotspot down here for the James Street Trail by the river, and lots of other hotspots that are great places to go birding here in Guelph. 
The smaller spots are just individual markers for specific places that people might have been when they saw chickadees. You'll also notice there are some color differences. So the blue spots are different from the red spots and that indicates how recently chickadees have been observed there. So at the blue spots, those might be old observations of chickadees, but the red spots indicate that chickadees have been seen there recently. So let's pick the Guelph Arboretum as a great example of where chickadees might be seen. If we open up the spot for the University of Guelph Arboretum, we can see that just recently on March 17th, there were two chickadees seen there, or by this person, five, or this person, 18 chickadees were seen at the Arboretum. And we can keep scrolling back and we can see all kinds of past observations of black-capped chickadees at the Arboretum. Here in February, Marie took some pictures of black cap chickadees. We can see there's a camera emblem here that suggests that there are photos associated with this observation. And so we can click on the date and open up this entire checklist, all of the birds seen by this person at the Arboretum on this day. We can see that she saw six Canada geese. She saw a hawk, but wasn't sure what kind of hawk it was. A hairy woodpecker, a raven, and here, are our black cap chickadees and the photo that she took on that day of chickadees at the Arboretum. Now we could explore birds at the Arboretum for a very long time, but we'll just head back to explore here and we'll pick maybe a more exotic species. We'll pick something that maybe we would never see in Guelph like the emperor penguin. And this is a great way to see just how far the information in eBird ranges. So here is our page for the emperor penguin. There's a photo of some penguins. And here is the range map for emperor penguins. We can see that not nearly as many emperor penguins are observed as black calf chickadees. And that makes a lot of sense, right? It's a lot harder to get to the places where emperor penguins live. So only 329 observations of emperor penguins in eBird. 98 of those observations have photos and two of them have audio recordings. And you can see the range map is very different. Let's open that up as a large map here. And we see the emperor penguins are observed down here in Antarctica, which makes a lot of sense because that is where most penguins live. Now, if we zoom in maybe on one of those spots in Antarctica, we might be able to have a look at somebody's specific observation of emperor penguins. Let's go to this really dark purple square down here. Here we've got a chunk of Antarctica. We can pick this hot spot and we see that all of these people have observed emperor penguins in this hot spot. Here Noah Stricker has some photos of the penguins he observed and some other birds as well. So that is pretty cool. There's a photo of emperor penguins observed in Antarctica. So you can see pretty quickly that there's lots and lots of information here in eBird and lots of ways that we can learn about the birds that we share our world with. Now we'll head back to explore to have a quick look at that other tool I mentioned. That is the explore regions tool. This is really useful if you wanna learn about the birds that you live near, or if maybe you're traveling to a different part of the world and you wanna learn about the birds that live there too. So we can enter our region. We can enter a, a country or a province or even a county. So let's enter Wellington County. Not Wellington, New Zealand, but we'll pick Wellington, Ontario, Canada. And here we can see all kinds of information about the birds that live in Wellington County. We can see recent sightings of different species here in the county. We can see different pictures and audio recordings of the birds that share our county with us. And over here on the left, we've got a menu of some different things to do as well. We can look at hotspots in the county. We can look at rare bird alerts for the county. We can look at a checklist with pictures of the birds that live here in the county. So there's lots of different ways to explore a location here as well. And that can help us to learn where to go birding in Wellington County and what birds to expect there. So playing around in the explore tab of eBird is a wonderful way to learn more about birds. But what happens when you start going bird watching and seeing birds in the field and maybe you would like to contribute your information to eBird as well? Well, that's when we're gonna navigate to the submit tab. Now in the submit tab, this is where we have the opportunity to submit checklists of the birds that we saw when we were bird watching. And those checklists then can be viewed by other users of eBird and can be used to do different scientific studies about birds. So the first thing we're gonna do if we're gonna submit a checklist is define our location. So let's imagine that today we went bird watching at the University of Guelph Arboretum. So we're gonna start by entering our region, that's Wellington County. 
and that'll show us a map of the county from which we can select the Arboretum. So we're gonna zoom in on the Guelph area here and try to find the Arboretum in this great sea of hot spots. Here we are, the University of Guelph Arboretum. We can see that that location has been chosen here on the right and we'll click continue. Now eBird wants a little bit of information from us about our bird watching today. So let's say that we did observe the birds today on March 18th, we'll select our date and we need to tell eBird what kind of observation it was. So if we were out walking or even traveling by car or by bike, we would select traveling. If we were sitting in one spot, not moving, maybe you're sitting on a patio or out in your lawn, we would select stationary. If you're entering an old record, we would call that historical. Or if you're just entering a bird that you saw while you weren't actually bird watching, that's what we call an incidental observation. But let's imagine that we went for a walk at the Arboretum, so we were traveling. Maybe we started at 9 o'clock in the morning, so we'll select a time. Maybe we walked for an hour, so we'll enter our duration. Let's say we walked approximately one kilometer in that hour, and maybe there were two of us. And we can enter any comments we'd like, those are just for us. Now we'll select continue, and what eBird will do is give us a list of all the possible birds that could have been seen at the Arboretum on this day. And from this list, we need to pick the ones that we saw. Now it's quite a long list, of course. The Arboretum is a great spot for bird watching, and we may not have seen nearly this many birds. That's okay. We're just gonna pick the ones that we did see at the Arboretum today. So starting at the top of the list, we have ducks and geese. Let's imagine that we saw maybe a flock of Canada geese. We'll enter the number that we saw, 12. Maybe we saw a couple of morning doves. That's a common kind of bird we might see at the Arboretum. Maybe a ring-billed gull flew over our heads. That's quite possible. Maybe we saw some turkey vultures, my favorite bird. I love those guys. We'll pick maybe a couple of blue jays. This is an imaginary list to remember, so we'll just imagine what we might have seen. Maybe we saw a white-breasted nuthatch. Maybe we saw some chickadees. Definitely, there's always chickadees hanging around the Arboretum. And once we're satisfied that we've added all of the species that we saw today at the Arboretum, we would click yes down here to tell eBird that we are submitting a list of all the birds we were able to identify today. And then we would click submit. And by clicking submit, this list would be submitted to eBird and it becomes a part of the eBird data repository. And that's how we can participate in eBird science. Now, of course, this is a made up list, so I'm not gonna submit that today. But we can go to our last tab here at the top of the screen. We can go to My eBird. My eBird is where eBird collects all of your observations so that you can keep track of all the birds that you've seen, where you've seen them, and that sort of thing. So here in eBird, you can access all of your checklists that you've submitted before. You can see your total number of birds that you've seen in the world, or in your country, or in your county, and you can access all of your personal information that way. It really is a wonderful opportunity to create a lovely picture of how your bird watching is going and to create little challenges for yourself as well uh, to keep you going, keep you motivated as a bird watcher. So this has been a summary of how you can use eBird to get a little more deeply involved in bird watching. Feel free to hop on there and explore. It's free to use and so you can explore to your heart's content and learn about all the different ways that you can use this amazing free tool to both learn about birds and to contribute to science as well. Happy bird watching.